<laughs> yeah, never gets old. We can turn that down. Hey gang, uh, I had a bit of inspiration this morning. We just finished watching our buddy Adam put together his own proton pack along with Ben Eady who worked on the movie, the new one that is, uh, Half-Life, not Half-Life, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Adam just made a proton pack. Uh, they actually filmed that two years ago and I got to see all that stuff when I visited two years ago when it was like half done, which is very exciting to see it all come together. Anyway, I have a proton pack that I made a couple years ago and that video inspired me to want to do some upgrades, a few cosmetic things we can do to take this kind of to the next level, specifically when we're talking about screws, all of the hardware, little, um, we've got some Allen head screws here. Some of these are real metal hardware, but some of them are plastic. These two, for example, were cast right into this resin piece. They look fine, but they could look a little better if we replace those with real metal screws. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I have a few examples of other props where I've done that very thing. Here's a little number I made a few years ago. This is Ray's Blaster from uh, the, the newest set of Star Wars movies. And these screws are not real. I 3D printed all of these parts and then I molded and cast them with the screws already in them. So these are castings of screws. They look okay, um, but you can actually see where the paint is starting to wear off. When this thing lies on the table, that's where it rubs and it's gone back down to the plastic. And of course I could touch that up, but if they were real screws, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, over on the handle, I did use real screws. And they just have a little bit more of that shine. They look a little bit nicer than these ones here. Now I could go and replace all of these still, and I may do that, but today we're focusing on the Proton Pack. Don't get distracted, Bill. Uh, okay, over here we have a couple more examples where I did use real hardware. This is Vash's revolver from Trigun, and all of these screws, not only are they real metal screws, they're also totally functional. They're necessary. Well, most of them anyway. Some of these are just decorative, but most of them are functional and used, for example, this hinge right here, it's used to open and close it. Um, these screws here hold this plate on, uh, and every other screw you see, like these ones on the handle, are doing real work. They're really holding that part together. I did the same thing on my Blade Runner gun, this guy here. This master was 3D printed, and then again, I molded and cast all the parts, but to hold them all together, I'm using real metal screws. They're really strong and durable, but also if you like polish them or weather them, they have just that wonderful shine. That's really hard to replicate with paint. So we're gonna take some of these screws. Well, not from this one. I have a whole box over here. We're gonna take some new screws and add them to our proton pack. Let's start over here, this part. Um, the screws, these four screws here, are all part of this whole thing. They were cast as one solid chunk of resin. Uh, which means they've been painted, but underneath is white. So if the paint gets chipped off, it goes down to white, which is not ideal. We want that to look all silver. So these will come off and we'll replace them with screws. Let me show you some of the screws I have. These are some of the screws I have. I keep this box mostly for this purpose. Um, these are all really cheap hex screws from Harbor Freight. They don't need to be good because they're mostly decorative. Um, I have hex screws or just hex cap screws, uh, I have grub screws, um, I got a bunch. Let's take a look. So what I'm looking for in here is a screw head mostly that matches what I have on the proton pack. The length of it doesn't really matter so long as there's enough meat to screw it into something. I can even cut it shorter if I need to. Um, you can see I've been collecting some of these. This one was modified at some point for some reason. Um, looking at my thing over there, I don't think any of these are small enough. Uh, so I may have to go find some other cap head screws, but I have a lot. Um, these, uh, these, uh, set screws are also super handy. All right. Nope. Those are rotary bits. Ah, the mother load. All of my metric screws. Most of my, many of my metric screws are in here. Let's see what we've got. Um, these are the ones that I want. This looks, that looks pretty close. That's an M4. This M5 is quite a bit bigger. Let's see how they look on the pack. Okay, M4 over here, M5 over here. I feel like we're somewhere in the middle. 
Um, and if I've got to pick one, I feel like I should go for the bigger one. Yeah, cool. All right, we can remove those and prep our screws. I uh, shortened these screws just to make it so I don't have to screw in the entire length of them. Uh, but these have to come off now and I think a drill bit should do the trick. Oh, that's working great. That's just deleting it, perfect. We'll clean up work with a knife and I think that'll, that'll do it. This is all just urethane rubber or plastic, so it's pretty easy to cut. You know, the original Proton Pack, or the video when we built this, uh, which by the way, there's a video when we built this Proton Pack, if you wanna go check that out. Uh, our buddy Garrick helped us build it, which was fantastic. It was very handy. He had the vacuform bucks and all the hardware molds and everything. We did that whole build and video in six days, which is insane. When we were in the middle of building it, Garrick pointed out that uh, people usually take six months to build these proton packs. <laughs> so this was a bit of a hurry, but I'm still very happy with how it turned out. With the fake screw head gone, I can now drill the hole for the new real screw. And it'll actually get threaded in this hole. making sure it's deep enough. And then this should thread right in there. You know what, I think that hole needs to be a little bigger. It's way easier to make a hole bigger than to try and make it smaller. There we go. And now I just have to screw it in. I don't need glue or anything. It's being held in physically. It's actually quite snug too. And it's just cutting its own threads right in that resin. Nice! So that's the new one, and those are the old ones. I replaced all four of these, and they're looking pretty nice. Uh, but we have one more trick up our sleeve. Since these are real metal, these are these like black oxide screws, so they have that coating on them, but if I take a Scotch-Brite pad and just sort of buff it a little bit, I can get that steel to come through and have a little bit of a hit of weathering on those. It's so nice, and it's so easy, too. You just have to scuff it up a little bit by hand. So these are the ones we've scuffed up here, and these are the fresh ones. Awesome. I've got some reference images here of a proton pack. This is a new one for the new movie. Adam took a bunch of these photos and they're actually sharing these over at tested.com if you wanna grab these high res images. And I noticed there are a lot of differences, but the end of this thing has a slotted screw in it and mine doesn't. And that seems like a pretty easy thing to do. Let's see if I can find something like that in my shop. So that's what I found and it's, it's a little small. <laughs> However, I have this big carriage bolt and I think I can modify this to look like a slotted screw. carriage bolt screw that I made, much bigger than the um, stock screw that I had. Uh, you may notice I have a bandaid on my hand. I'll leave that up to you to figure out when that happened. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this is gonna get drilled out and we can just screw that in. Well, don't fall over. Oh yeah. That looks great. We'll have to weather around that a little bit, um, but that's fine. Let's see how we did compared to our notes. There, that might be a tiny bit big, but that looks really, really good. Look how dirty this one is around it though. We'll wanna do a little more, more grime there. But let's do some more screws first. Next up are these two screws here. Now these parts are also resin cast pieces. Um, on the new Proton Pack here, they've got different screws. These um, slotted hex head looking things. And I found almost the perfect screw, except that it's green, but we can remove the green. That looks just right. Let me use the uh, drill here to hold that and spin it. And then I'll use my rotary tool with a wire brush to remove the green. Oh, that works, that works a treat. Looking good. Screws are prepped, time for surgery. Let's remove these cast screw heads. Now there is a pin connecting this piece to this piece and I may hit it, so hold on to your butts. Yep, I hit it, that's fine. This can, um, I can shorten that if I have to, but let's screw it in and see if it works. Yeah, I'm gonna have to shorten that a little bit. That's okay. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks great. That looks so good. Let's do the other one. Oh yeah, that looks so legit. Mm. All right, the only problem is these screws are bright and shiny. We need to dirty them up a little bit. So let's grab some acrylic paint. Do a little wash. Got a little concoction here of black and burnt sienna acrylic paint and a little bit of water. And we're gonna use that to dirty up these screws. Yeah, that nice mix there. This will sort of tie all this stuff together too. It'll fill in the crack or the crevice between the screw and the plastic piece. And that's where, if this were a real world object, everything would accumulate there and it would be almost impossible to clean it out. So that's what we're working for here. Yeah. I'll let that dry and see how it looks, but I think that's a good amount of uh, grime in there. Yeah. All right, let's touch up a couple more pieces and we'll be all done. Missed a spot on this side. Did I get it? Yep. Yeah, go team. Yes. Oh, it looks so old and dirty. I love it. Down under the screw, some of that white resin is sneaking out. So that's definitely where we want to get some weathering and hide those crimes. And uh, getting some paint down in the cap of the screw makes sense too. You would think that would get some accumulated grime. There we go. I'm leaving plenty of that uh, paint down in there. Since this is kind of awkward to clean, you would think it wouldn't get cleaned very well. While we were working, we noticed some white resin sneaking out that was scratched down to the resin. So, got this flat black paint, just a tiny bit of it. We're gonna go in there and hide those crimes. Yeah, you didn't see anything. Still works. 
Guess the, whoa, guess the plutonium's still good. Let's stand you up a little bit. That was super fun and also really quick. So if you've got a plastic prop at home, a 3D print, a resin casting or something, and you wanna spruce it up with some real hardware, that's an easy way to do it. Uh, also, if you love Ghostbusters, and who doesn't? I know I do. Uh, we've got a bunch more projects. We did this trap. Hmm? This is from the Spirit Halloween toy. I also made the pedal for that trap. This is using Sean Charlesworth's files and parts right there. That's a whole video. And then of course we have the ghost meter. Good to go. Also, another toy mod video for that. There's a full video on this build and for a Halloween video, I made the whole outfit, which I plan on wearing this year. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us uh, in the shop today. And thank you so much to the members of our Extra Credit Club because of them that we can afford to keep making these videos. So thank you so much for the support. If you want to join, get access to literally hundreds of exclusive videos. I'll have a link down in the description where you can join both on Patreon and here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching and get excited for Halloween. Just a couple weeks away and I've got a costume already. See you there, friends. <laughs> Bit of a delay, but the ghost over there got it.